Future Commerce is brought to you by Vertex. Vertex Cloud is for businesses of all sizes, from small and medium-sized businesses all the way to enterprise. You can find out how Vertex can help your business by visiting them online at vertexcloud.com slash future commerce. Future Commerce is brought to you by Omnisend. Omnisend is way more than just email marketing. Drive more sales and combine more channels with one platform. Learn more about Omnisend today at omnisend.com slash future commerce. Future Commerce is brought to you by Gladly. What if customer service could feel like a conversation between friends? Well, Gladly is a radically personal customer service platform that puts people... Yes, people at the center of a single lifelong conversation. By enabling B2C companies to focus on people talking to people, Gladly powers a lifetime of conversations across every channel, from phone, email, text, chat, and social media. See what a truly customer-centered platform looks like today at gladly.com slash future commerce. Hello and welcome to Future Commerce, the podcast about whatever the heck we feel like. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is uh, beyond today in commerce. You know the future. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there is no like. I just feel. Do you feel after two hundred and some episodes that, or however you count it, that the idea about cutting edge and next generation commerce, like which was our tagline for the longest, do you, is that tired? Are you tired of that? I don't know. I don't know if it's, 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 uh, it's commerce, certainly commerce. Uh, that, but, that's, I'll well, leave it yeah, there. But like, <laughs> like, is it even edge. commerce? We don't even talk about commerce all the time anyway. <laughs> we do. We talk about things that relate to, you know, Engaging in commerce in a in a a not creepy way. That's (laughs) (laughs) what is. I I I I take issue with the cutting edge thing. I think the cutting edge is the thing that bothers me. Did you ever see the movie The Cutting Edge? Do you remember that movie from the The nineties? Ice skating one. The ice skating movie. Exactly. Yeah. To my sister and I had this whole thing in like growing up when we saw that movie there's this uh because it's a hockey player becomes a figure skater right for the u.s hockey team which is just the best conceit for any sort of rom-com movie ever um but and they took it it, like the movie takes itself super seriously uh (laughs) but uh he's this tough guy and she's you know the best figure skater in america and uh he asks the question what's a toe pick and then she basically like busts his butt a bunch on the ice and every time he falls she's like topic which has become an in joke for 30 years with my sister anyway that has nothing to do with anything Um, nice i take issue with cutting edge Uh, i feel like wasn't there was there was a sequel there was a sequel to that wasn't it called something like the bleeding edge or something no it was called d2 the mighty ducks um (laughs) oh my gosh that's the one where you know it's funny if you want like a a weird tangent to rep uh, my my recent insiders piece um one of the stars of the mighty ducks a guy named brock pierce uh was mentioned in my most recent uh piece (laughs) brock pierce went on to become uh like this blockchain uh uh twitter sort of guru sort of person and um and kept company with a bunch of known uh, uh, pedophiles. <laughs> I don't know. There's no nice way to say that. Oh, geez. Um, uh, which is the subject of uh, his, the people he kept company with is the subject of uh, some of my most recent Insiders article and some of the happenings in, in uh, VC uh, funding in the early 2000s around uh, uh, something called the Digital Entertainment Network. Um, so... Uh, yeah, check that out. And somehow in the story, Payless Shoes makes an appearance and we sort of pin it to some news around uh, Payless uh, launching a uh, purpose-built uh, uh, or purpose-driven, mission-driven brand, re- relaunching as a mission-driven brand to uh, connect the world to the internet. So I, w- I shan't say any more. If that's not cutting edge, Brian, I don't know what is. 
ALS shoes, cutting edge. That's the next generation of commerce. Before, yeah, that is cutting edge <laughs> and next generation commerce. There it is. That's your intro. Brian, you recently wrote a piece um, that uh, that actually caught on. It's funny. It was featured in Lean Lux. I think it came out in July, I think we put. Yeah, we yeah, it early up. July, I think. Yep. Yeah. What was it the, about? Yeah, the new data. Uh, it was about the, sort of how the view of the world uh, that uh, you know Carly and, and the next generation has, and 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 how they view uh, their stuff and their the da, the way. That, can you can yeah. you give us can, can <laughs> what is Dada? So Dadaism is was a movement in the early 20th century that was sort of a response to all of the the well, to the the World War One and to all of the crazy things that were happening in the world that felt like the world was sort of blowing up, kind of similar to the way we feel about the world right now. And so it was this re- movement to sort of like just put in the most ridiculous things and sort of make a point with them. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and, and sort of subvert the... And, and artist movement. The artist, it was yes, a, it was an artist movement. movement art. sub, yes, it, exactly. In art, well, in culture, it, beyond art, it was in culture and it was to subvert everything that everyone took so seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you see that kind of popping up right now, actually almost exactly a hundred years later, um, where like you, you kind of get laughed at if you don't subvert yourself to some degree, like you're not actually taken seriously unless you don't take yourself seriously to some, to some degree. And it started with this idea that I had about how, like at this point in, in culture, there's this whole idea of something that can be taken seriously and also make fun of itself at the exact same time beyond irony so much as like additional layers of like sort of self parody, but also like legitimate like art at the exact same time. It's yeah. I, I couldn't find a word for it to describe it. So I had to write an article about it. <laughs> I, while you were talking, I'm, I'm, I'll read from the Wikipedia. Uh, it's an avant-garde intellectual movement that started in world war one, although not at first an art movement, it did influence art. Yes. And Marcel Duchamp uh, had this uh, famous uh, fountain uh, sculpture, which was literally just like a urinal turned on its side so that you urinate on yourself. Correct. Uh, interesting. Um, so what does that have to do with brands and brand marketing? Uh, why do people care? It's interesting. There's a lot of different sort of outflows of that. One of the things that we talked about in the article was the sort of this new American maximalism, maximalism. So we, we've been so hyper-focused on minimalism for so long, and it's such a, like, a, the, it's, it's crept into our psyche. What we don't realize is that it's actually only made a little tiny dent in our psyche. Like, actually, maximalism is, 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 is never really left, and it's back on the rise. And so, um, you know, it's this, it's this really interesting moment where we talk about being minimalist, but we're actually, like take things to the extremes and the absurds. And we also make fun of ourselves for doing it because we all know we should be minimalist. <laughs> ah, yeah. What's funny is there was a, there was a piece uh, about the maximalism and the cottage core of like Gigi Hadid, uh, which, uh, which had landed some time ago. I forget the, um, the, the publication. I feel this, this, now I'm having deja vu. I feel like we've mentioned this at least once. Yeah. I think we have mentioned this before. That was uh, the, the New Yorker. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Yes, the, New York, yes. uh, the New Yorker piece. Anyway, long story short, um, nice to see a little feature from uh, Paul and gang at uh, Lean Lux. Uh, I, I enjoyed your piece and go check it out. We'll link it up in the show notes yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, from Future Commerce Insiders. If you're not on the list for Future Commerce Insiders, you should be. Uh, go to futurecommerce.fm slash subscribe and that will uh, allow you to sign up, get on the list. And uh, yeah, new essays every Sunday, and we got some real bangers <laughs> coming up. Uh, oh yeah, this this uh, week the most recent one was yeah. uh, the existential brands <laughs> part Which, one. Yeah, there's if, if you haven't noticed that's some there, interesting we, feedback on that one. <laughs> we 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 swing wildly. Brian likes to focus on on art and psychology, and I have literally no like I I 
I know nothing about art or psychology, so you won't get that from me. But uh, between Brian and I and uh, and Jesse Tyler, uh, we're, we're, we got some some varied and very interesting uh, concepts. But let's put that aside for a bit because I feel like it's very self-serving to talk about that. There's like a bunch happening in the world. Um, well, tell me, tell me. So what's, uh, what's something you've been interested in lately? Like what's a brand that you found to be compelling something? Tell, oh, me, yeah. something, tell me something interesting, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> your, your excitement level is, is very, very good today, Brian. I love it. All there's, right, good. There, dude, there's, um, there's a bunch of things that have been on my radar lately. Um, mostly because if, if I had to rep some other uh, media property that's not future commerce, Thing Testing has a really interesting oh, yeah. uh, site and newsletter and um, started with an Instagram. Uh, and they have such an interesting membership model. I'm sure we've mentioned Thing Testing on more than one occasion uh, around these parts. Um, uh, but Thing Testing had a newsletter that came out, I think, I don't know, in the last two days or so. Uh, that mentioned a few brands and one that just never, we never actually got around to talking about uh, after their launch. Um, it's a brand called Topicals. And uh, Topicals is a uh, brand that's founded by uh, two women of color um, and just uh, has such an interesting, um, an interesting product uh, set. It's Olamide and Claudia, uh, Olamide, Olamide Olawe and Claudia Teng. Uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing those names correctly, but I thought I'd at least try. Um, and there, it's a skincare brand. Uh, what's so awesome about this and why it came back to mind is, is featured in um, in a thing testing newsletter just recently, uh, which got me back, like sort of uh, uh, interested in talking about it. It's like they keep selling out, uh, which is sort of you know uh, amping up the hype factor here. Um, they they launched right after coronavirus in April. Um, and they, uh, ever since, you know, they, they keep selling out of some products. They had a mass retail launch, I believe with Nordstrom. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they launched earlier this month, uh, I'm sorry, last month in August at Nordstrom, uh, where they sold out immediately as well. Um, and you know, there was, there was a lot of discussion of, uh, like the sameness of millennial brands recently. Um, there's like a concept called blands. That was in Bloomberg, um, and mm -hmm. this uh, article was Premium called... Premium Mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to your new bland... Uh, sorry, welcome to your bland new world, which was written by Ben Schott. Um, also, uh, off, often the much maligned piece uh, of people who, who said, like, the take was bad. Um, you, cannot, you cannot ignore the fact that there's a similar aesthetic to a lot of brand launches in the last few years, but I don't know that that's really the the pin on the piece the pin is um how does a consumer distinguish amongst them and does big cpg ultimately just benefit at the end of the day um web so smith commented on this at length i thought he did actually a pretty good job of saying like oh he you know, did a phenomenal job he did yeah. a much better job than i'll ever do um in uh in in sort of summing up uh like that take but all that aside the reason I even brought it up was to say, I think topicals really is the kind of anti bland um, topicals really just strikes me as having such an interesting, uh, uh, just a different like look and feel a different aesthetic. Um, they're each of their products are individually branded. They have uh, uh, something called uh, faded uh, and faded is a uh, like for sun damaged and scarred skin um, there's something called like butter, uh, which is a product, um, that is a hydrating mask. Um, and so, oh, faded is a, a clearing gel, uh, like butter is a hydrating mask. It feels kind of like the Glossier model. Like there's, it's, it, so much going on here. I, I, I really would, uh, highly recommend you check it out, but here's, here's a couple things that are a little, a little deeper as to why I think topicals is super, uh, compelling, um, like they just from a brand watching perspective, they have a uh, product finder quiz, like as most modern brands do. Uh, their quiz is called Skin, Sun and Stars, but their approach with the Skin, Sun and Stars quiz uh, is effectively like input your info and receive your skin's star signs picked for your unique needs, which just harken back to me how much uh, I've been told, and I don't know this firsthand, but I've been told Gen Z is really into sort of the 
the spiritualism, um, you know, sort of uh, a horoscope uh, uh, start being very in tune to, uh, you know, this, this, uh, a more spiritual, uh, you know, life. Uh, and so I, I find that that to be, you know, at least being echoed here. Uh, it reminds me of birth date candles. I don't, I don't know if you saw, uh, we did a piece, um, like a brand review uh, for birth date candles, birthdatecandles.com. And it's like, you can get all of your numerology uh, for your birthday, your, uh, your sign um, and, and your horoscope uh, and a scent that's perfectly crafted just for you based on your birth date. Um, anyway, seems really much, very much in that vein, great way to engage with customers and uh, also raising money for a nonprofit called Sad Girls Club. Um, and Sad Girls Club is, uh, sadgirlsclub.org uh, is uh, creating a community around diminishing the stigma around mental health and uh, striving to support women of color and the millennial and Gen Z population. So um, I love, 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 love. Uh, I, I just love everything that this stands for. It's really cool. Topicals is a brand to watch and one that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm standing currently as the kids would say i feel so stupid saying that uh, uh what actually it's interesting it does remind me actually that their site you mentioned sort of the design flavor that they brought it does remind me a little bit of behave uh behave candy, oh, behave we had candy. On, well yeah. i think behave behave to me feels brutalist um, it's a little bit more it's a little bit more in your face yeah a little bit more like like yes i i do agree with that um but it, like, it's it's there's some similarities. If you go look at their sites, there's a certain level of connection. I think in terms of like layout and and feel, and obviously it's a little bit like behaves a lot more in your face. <laughs> well, yeah, <I'm, laughs> for sure. I so the the so that site by the way is eatbehave.com. dot um, Behave definitely has a sort of brutalist aesthetic. I would say topicals has you know sort of the the fun color. Um, yeah. I can see where you would see these are the same. I, I see them a little, yeah. Topical is probably closer to the millennial, uh, aesthetic than behave. I think behave is way out there. Long That's story short. Gen Z. Can I mention one more, uh, brand? Yeah. It's a, yes, it's a friend of the show. I'll, I'll, I'll also mention one too. Uh, it, it got me thinking about coffee brands. Uh, there's a, a friend of the show, uh, Joe McCarthy, who, um, no yeah, relation Joe. to uh, the senator, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Joseph McCarthy, who is uh, the uh, resident thought leader and speaker extraordinaire, and I think head of growth at uh, our friend and uh, former partner uh, who worked with us on 90, Nine by Nine, Clavio, and um, Joe uh, co-founded a brand recently called Springline Coffee. Uh, springlinecoffee.com and uh, they you know are roasting and blending uh, themselves and uh, very nautically inspired and which makes perfect sense Joe being from New England and uh, in the Boston area I got to try um, I got to try springline signature myself like it a lot I get nothing out of it by telling you about it I just happen to love uh, that a friend of mine started a brand and um Brian, you also uh, received a package from them. I wore the hat, by the way. The nice. Springline has um, uh, had sent some merch along with uh, in my first order and sent me like a, a ball cap. I wore it on my 40 mile run uh, for my 40th birthday. So that was kind of special, kind of cool to, to take that with me. But um, yeah, it's always special when a friend of yours starts something new and extra special when it's in, you know, in a, a an area of the world or the area of the economy that we, we happen to cover on a podcast. <laughs> uh, especially good call out after uh, you posted that, uh, that bit about Alex Cohen and blue bottle. <laughs> oh yeah. Alex Cohen, Alex Cohen on Twitter saying, Oh, the blue bottle, by the way, he turned off replies on that tweet, which is hilarious. Like he doesn't even want to be at like, don't at me. Um, like <laughs> blue bottle is objectively like the best coffee chain. And <laughs> my response to him was like, La Colombe, uh, would like to have a word with you because I disagree. Uh, I like La Colombe, uh, a lot. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to go like large chain, there's a, there's a few intelligence. is also pretty good. Um, oh gosh. I forgot about intelligence. I love them. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, I, 
I'm remembering our trip last summer around Seattle doing uh, coffee tasting uh, uh, at a bunch of places that you just don't get here in Palm Beach, like Cafe Nero. And um, gosh, I wish that we're, uh, I wish those, uh, it's a fond memory. I'll say it that yes, way. It was yeah, a fond memory. Yes, that was a lot of fun. So much good coffee out here. Olympia Roasters, killing it. They're just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, I will say though, I they, I found the the shot pool from Olympia to be very challenging. Um, it was also, I think, maybe my fourth espresso shot. So I think I was. <laughs> oh no, that was like your eighth espresso <laughs> shot, man. That was. We had a lot of coffee. We had a lot of coffee. That was. There's fun. a brand you you had your eye on uh, recently. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, sort of in line with like interesting models and interesting aesthetic for sure. Like, um, and actually that there's, I think there's a little connection between the aesthetic between behave and this as well, but the brand faculty, uh, I found to be pretty interesting. And I, I mentioned them in my most uh, recent insiders piece. Um, Emily Singer, uh, called them out in chips and dips Reese in her, uh, number 28, I think it was, um, or is it 31? Anyway. One of these most recent ones, um, and uh, what I th- I found really really interesting about their model is it sort of had that sort of mischief like feel to it, uh, where it's just all drops. Restocking is not a thing. Hype Beast did a whole article on this. Uh, it's it's just constant like update of like basically identity. I think that uh, they said they had seven different uh, like logos that they would use. Um, like, and I'm, I'm, and I'm guarantee you that like, they'll probably stop using some of those and introduce new ones. And the idea is that, you know, that the change is sort of built into the DNA of their, of their brand. Um, and, and focusing on what's next to what's cool, what's interesting. Um, but you, you missed the, what, the, what are the products? Like what, what, what do they do? So the, yeah. The product is uh, basically men's skincare and nails. So they sell like nail polish for men and men's skincare products and every product drop is different. So yeah. Future Commerce is brought to you by Vertex. Vertex Cloud is the automation platform for tax calculation and use tax and everything in between for businesses of all sizes. From SMB all the way to enterprise, businesses all over the world trust Vertex for their tax calculation needs, and you should too. Check them out today at vertexcloud.com slash futurecommerce. OmniSend is one platform to control all of your marketing channels. From marketing automation, SMS, and email, to forms and segmentation, you can bring together different channels under one platform with OmniSend. OmniSend's powerful platform allows you to link together every customer touch point with one dashboard. And did I mention they have the most transparent pricing in the entire MarTech industry? Find out why brands like Fred Siegel and Unilever trust OmniSend with their customer relationships. Find out more about OmniSend today at omnisend.com slash future commerce. Gladly is a radically personal customer service platform. Gladly gives customer service teams the ability to treat their customers like people. From knowing their last purchase, their dress size, or even their child's upcoming birthday, all before ever saying hello. Built for the way that people communicate today, a customer and their history are never parted within Gladly. And all conversations across all channels are all contained under a single conversation thread to give agents, the real heroes here, the tools that they need to deliver exceptional customer service experiences. Gladly works with some of the most innovative brands in the world, helping them to deliver a more powerful and more personal experience for their customers. Some of those customers are JetBlue, Toomey, Joanne, Godiva, and Native Shoes, and maybe even you. Don't wait. Find out today what a radically personal customer service platform is all about. Visit gladly.com slash future commerce to learn more. Even if you're not into the category, like I don't paint my nails, but uh, I think that the... You've the, never painted your nails? Not even clear? Not even Have clear. Have you ever gone to like a, a nail salon and gotten a manicure? 
No, I haven't. Uh, wow. I actually, I probably need one. <laughs> I'll I tell you, like, one. as uh, I, you know, I have a skincare regimen. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Uh, there's something special about, you know, of course, I haven't done it since I've been in my house for seven bloody months. But, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's something special about uh, having a manicure. You should try it sometime. It's probably not for everybody, but I, I, oh, I like a good manicure. Sounds awesome, actually. I probably um, should get a manicure someday. <laughs> I don't know if I'd wear the moss green. Uh, I don't know if I could get away with the moss green. Uh, actually, I love all the, the colors... Though. As all the colors, like, I think the moss cream is actually the coolest. Yeah. Uh, I love the the site. Uh, I like, I kind of want to do a, a deep dive on the site, uh, maybe as a, um, as a YouTube like piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should do it. Yeah, really I dig love that it. Idea. Yeah. And, and I really like, um, this is basically just turning into uh, an exploration of brand. We just haven't talked in so long. I feel like this, I know, is, this is turning into... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, an audio uh, exploration of brands that we've been watching, which is fine. That's totally fine because I think they're doing super interesting things. They are. Um, they are. It no, reminds this is really me, cool. It really reminds me. Uh, faculty, faculty's super cool. There is a. Uh, uh, if you go to wor- so if you're on faculty dot world, that's the the domain. Um, they have a playlist like music is is part of the experience of shopping um if you click on world uh it's you know it's like a little content portal they have a spotify playlist uh it just seems very interesting when you first land on the site it it doesn't pop up asking you to join an email it's an sms it's like join our sms uh uh like you know sms first group it's very very uh yeah very forward thinking there's a crawl at the bottom that's like text faculty for early access to drop some free stuff uh it's very very cool i i'm i'm a big fan of that yeah it's cool it's really cool again probably not my like i'm probably not gonna buy anything from them but the but the model is i think really really interesting and i expect to see more of this in fact i'll probably dive into more of this in fact i'm going to dive into more of this in my next article that i write (laughs) So the uh, on on this like in this vein, uh, there's so much that's really kind of like happened in in the world of like brands. Um, there just seems to be so much uh, launching recently. Um, there was a, a piece recently, uh, which I'm, I don't even know why I'm talking about because I won't be able to reference it. I should I should I should have had it uh, ready to go. Uh, but uh, even venture is picking back up for uh, consumer brands. Uh, in the last uh, six or eight weeks, it sounds like. Did it ever really slow down? I mean, maybe it for did, like, yeah. a couple, like a couple months when everyone was like, DTC is dead, which was yeah. ridiculous. Like, like, like focus in on a couple examples of like DTC that having tr- that's having trouble for reasons that are probably not related to the fact that it's DTC, like bad mm-hmm. business management and you know, other things like that, like, but even not then, related to the model there, there's, it's just, there's, there's a lot happening. It was like brands that have been around for a long time that are actually starting to get recognition. Um, a friend of the show, um, uh, uh has a, uh, Adam, uh, has leaf, uh, shaving. I don't, I don't know if you've, um, yeah, I checked out leaf shaving. You've seen Shaving's leaf really shaving cool. recently. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, launched like <laughs> eight years ago. Um, or something like that. Adam Simone. I'm sorry. I, I forgot your last name, Adam. Um, Adam and I have chatted a few times. Like we've done a few virtual coffees. Um, you know, they got featured in GQ, uh, not through any PR move, but just Us because. Too. Oh, wait. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a PR or not. Eh, I yeah, don't know. <laughs> G- GQ has this really, you know, they, they picked it as the most innovative razor, the, the leaf uh, safety razor. Uh, but they just relaunched on Shopify after many years on on WooCommerce, and they launched with a little bit of a new brand identity, sort of modernizing it. Um, and I, I'm leafshave.com is the domain. Um, they sort of they they just it's just beautiful, like it's beautiful. And I there there's there's so there's so much happening, even if it's not net new, like brand new brands that you've never seen before. Uh, there seems to be a lot of brands going through an exercise of, um, I don't want to say modernizing, but like sort of, you know, yeah, having a bit of a refresh or having a, a, a more public moment. And Adam, you know, having been at it for six, seven years um, plus in the game, 
and uh, you know, actually now going at it full time, growing, you know, growing the business. Uh, it's it's such a such an interesting time to be doing all of this. And I, I say this knowing full well. I'll make a statement. Um, I know that the world is not back to normal. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> It's be, not what? Be, what are you and, talking and may about, never, Philip? And, and it may never go back to normal again. <laughs> but it seems like the world has kind of learned that like the moment that we had in the spring and sort of the like everything grinding to a halt is not sustainable. And we kind of have to move on and learn to live in in whatever the next normal is. We have to learn to live with the virus amongst us and and learn to live with people who make bad choices and governments that aren't you know, doing the best job. Uh, and that's like, yeah. So it's not that progress is picking back up. It's like the progress is fi- is Well, it's, yeah, ca- there's, there's case this in point. interesting case yeah. in point, like Neiman Marcus, uh, just came out and said that they are going to, uh, effectively reorg and, and lay off a bunch of store, uh, associates. Um, yeah. Uh, some front facing, some, yeah. Yeah, some some front facing, some not front facing, or um, customer facing, and um, they said it's going to be significant, and that the pivot is to ecom. And I think, like when you start to see, it's interesting. Luxury is actually pivoting to ecom, maybe even faster than non-luxury is, which is, I mean, the, I there, think are you non-luxury the was already. They're... Was already in BCom, so they didn't have to. <laughs> like, there's no pivot necessary. Um, but I do think that the non non luxury that um, that didn't pivot non luxury really... feels like a weird thing to say. Like, it's yes. the it's just like the di- like digitally Goods native brands or I don't know. I don't know. No, not digitally native. They started in digital. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm talking about brands yeah. that were had a big brick and mortar footprint. And oh, I see what you mean. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, so I, I'm the one playing catch up. Um, or Neiman Marcus is playing catch up, according to Steve Dennis. It's uh, this is something they are that certainly... catch up. obviously they went through bankruptcy, so they it took them a while to catch up. <laughs> You're so excited right now. I um, know. Uh, yeah, I'm probably my microphone's probably. Popping I think those like things. Crazy. I think those things are, you know, like, yeah, financial distress causes you to have to like reexamine and and go uh, go back to the drawing board, but have it's a little not, bit of a, a little bit of an existential like, crisis. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And if only someone had only written about that recently, um, uh, maybe, you know, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Long story short, there's like, yeah, it's, most of this is above my head uh, and well above my pay, pay grade. I, I will say as somebody who's a fan of the space and, and wants to see people succeed, I don't want to see, I don't want to see retailers fail. Uh, because when, when, uh, when there's failures in this, you know, in, in any, in any sector of the economy, but especially in retail, there's a lot of people who are living, you know, like right at their means, uh, or, you know, who are, you know, grossly underpaid, not paying paid a living wage, barely making ends meet that are, you know, that are victims of, uh, you know, of the fallout. They're the ones who pay the price. It's not the executives. The executives are going to probably just be just fine. Like uh, it's the retail workers um, who depend on salary uh, and and or who depend on you know some sort of stream of income and live probably month to month uh, and barely make ends meet. We have to f- figure out how how to solve that. I know there was a story recently about Walmart uh, scaling up its pay, which I yes. if that I do, like anything that makes the news is you know a concentrated. <laughs> is a concentrated push of press to right. make to make you know the world know about it so that Walmart looks good in the end. Well, well, Walmart's Walmart been... not having a great track record in the past of paying their uh, workers a living wage or or letting them have enough hours to be paid uh, for benefits. Um, so it'd be it, nice to see them come 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 true on it. Yeah, and I, and I feel like you know we've seen a lot of movement towards this though at Walmart, and Walmart's really, really doing everything in its power to shift its identity. I think it was in Retail Dive I recently saw like, is Walmart finally coming into like like into fashion effectively? Like, are they are oh, they that. actually? Yeah, yeah, and and you've got Walmart Plus introduced to compete with Amazon Prime. Like, I feel like Walmart's doing everything it possibly can to shift. It's business starting, you know, a few years back, 
uh, when, when uh, you know, they started investing in e-com and saw it as a legitimate channel and started acquiring effectively talent, like even more than, than brands, like if, if we're acquiring talent and expertise and understanding of how to do things in a modern way, well ahead of a lot of other like, Larger brands and and CPG companies and you know we see you know we, we've talked about Pepsi's attempt to get into this which was not acquisition it was just launch. Um. <laughs> you, we're not allowed to be too critical of Pepsi because uh, then they don't respond to emails and they unsubscribe from uh, <laughs> insiders. Uh, but long long I, I think there's a there's a, a real challenge around um, you know do you listen like Walmart. Walmart is probably position more positioned to do a better position to do well uh, in a down economy than most retailers. Uh, their pivot to digital can be, you know, somewhat slow jet black being shut down and, you know, some other experiments, uh, you know, show them as like, were they so forward thinking? Could they actually make something work is like, there's a bunch of questions there again, probably not qualified to comment on. Uh, but Hey, like, is it news that Walmart is launching a private label? Uh, you know, is it news? No, like, that's not news. <laughs> like they, Walmart has had private label merchandise for a very long time. I, I, especially apparel. I know because I was a kid growing up in the eighties whose parents, you know, clothed me in Walmart clothes. Right. Um, and so, uh, shopping at the mall was totally off the table. Like that was not this, that's not, we couldn't afford it. That's not who we were. I, you know, son right. of a baker, uh, I ran the till <laughs> at the bakery <laughs> at nine years old and I wasn't paid. Um, so like this whole, this, this idea that, uh, that that's some sort of like pivotal strategic movement. Well, I mean, in that case, they're playing catch up to target who has been doing yes. this for three or four years now. Um, and, you, and you brought up an interesting point though, like Walmart is set up to succeed, whether they're playing catch up or not, whether they're in an up account economy or a down economy, like it kind of doesn't matter. Walmart's set up for success. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think the ubiquity, right. And that's, yes, you, you could probably say the same, uh, about Amazon and you could probably say the same about like there's, Did, there's, didn't you go to four star, the four star, uh, or you, you walk past the four star. Oh, this is, yeah, this yeah. is such an interesting yeah. like phenomenon. I don't, yes. I, I do not understand this. And again, I like, you know, maybe I'm just not the target. Uh, we mentioned for the first time back in 2018, they had the launch of Amazon four star, uh, was an episode called Amazon cake mix. I think. <laughs> which, um, <laughs> Which exists, isn't getting any SEO points, by the way, <laughs> and and Amazon Cake Mix does not exist, um, but should maybe uh, as an Amazon Basics offering. <laughs> should it? Uh, it might catch on fire. You better watch out. <laughs> so there's this. So there's a store called Amazon Four Star. If you're not hip, uh, it is a store, brick and mortar store, or, or a chain of them now that has only four star rated products and above. And uh, spoiler alert. There's a lot of Alexa devices in the store. Many yeah. Echoes, many, uh, you know, uh, uh, powered by Alexa devices. Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 7. Uh, that, I, well, that, it's all current Gen stuff, but there's, uh -huh. you know, there's, it's actually really nicely categorized from what I could see uh, through the window. Uh, so the Palm Beach Garden, in Palm Beach Gardens, there's the uh, Gardens Mall. It's a higher end mall. I, would, I don't know if it's a luxury mall. It's a higher end mall. Um, they, that's why it has the Amazon four star, it has the Amazon four star. It's a four star mall. It is <laughs> four star and above. Um, <laughs> it's a four. So in, oh in Amazon gosh. four star, I happened to be strolling past it, uh, this weekend, uh, you know, back to school was last week for the kids and they, uh, I took them to the mall to grab some stuff. Um, and Hey, like, by the way, just having mentioned being the kid that grew up with Walmart clothes, uh, I'm doing okay for myself to be able to, you know, go to the mall for my kids, uh, you know, take them to Nordstrom or whatever, and you know, buy the expensive freaking backpack, um, or <laughs> water bottle, you know, it's like my kid has a $40 water bottle that should just never have. I, I'm pretty sure my entire wardrobe from like third grade was $40. Um, but I digress. Um, but you know, like we're like that's such an awesome thing. Uh, my kids have no idea how spoiled they are. We're walking past the Amazon Four Star store. It's the only store in the entirety of the Gardens Mall that has a line outside of it. And when I say a line, I'm not talking about three or four people waiting in line like you might have seen for like Hot Topic or something. It's not because 
not just because of like store uh, uh, space in the store or county restrictions on how many people can be in a confined space. It's that there are a hundred people in line. It's like 90 people. In, it's wrapping around multiple times on itself line. It's baffling. Uh, I don't know, unless there are textbooks that receive a four star rating or above, I cannot fathom why so many people were in line for the store. It's shocking. Um, but again, maybe I'm just not that shopper. It just goes to show you, I think like Amazon is a brand has, uh, just has, you know, has a, a, a such a king of the hill dominance. Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't uh, matter what happens <laughs> to the economy. Amazon's going to win. That's, that's sort of where we're at. But is like, it, so that's in this moment. I think the, the footnote there is in this moment. In, in this moment. In, yes. in, in prior decades, you might have said JCPenney or, uh, or Macy's or maybe Man. Sears uh, was positioned to be the dominant player that was going to win no matter what. That's a really um, good point. You know, things changes. can change. Even, yeah. even, even Jeff Bezos has said, like, in 75 years from now, we might not exist. And that's okay. And actually, again, that kind of gets back to my Insiders article. Like, brands that can say that about themselves. Which one, by the way? The, the existential brand? The existential brand okay, one, yeah. yes. Brands that actually have the ability to say, it is okay if we don't exist. Those are the ones that actually have the ability to operate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> those are the ones. Which yes. one? Which one? Um, uh, by the way, uh, side point. I got. I got to get this in there. I got to get this in there. This is a must. I'm so over five stars. Five star rating is dead. It's uh, dead to me. Five star this means absolutely nothing. means nothing. There was like, a story about uh, Amazon cracking down on uh, f- false reviews uh, recently. I can't remember. Speaking of five stars, hey, well, do us a favor. Uh, thanks for listening. By the way, we're, we're going to wrap here in a second. You should go give us five stars. I, I know Brian just said five stars is dead. I don't want a four star from you. We're better than that. Go give That's us a five star. That's why it's dead. Four, four stars is the worst that people give. Like it's like four or five. Uh, I don't know about you. I, we have definitely had at least one one star review on our podcast. Okay, fine, fine. So uh, I, I, I don't know if that's totally true. but It's four, true. Yeah. But a four star is like devastating. When I give someone four stars, I'm like, oh, this was not good. <laughs> Brian, you, you need to change. Like, I think that's a Brian problem and not like a rest of the world problem. But I want, uh, let me finish that. the plug. Go to yes. iTunes right now. Uh, give us give a five, us five star, star on iTunes. It helps us get in front of, of other people. Our audience is growing. We have an amazing community. Um, and listen, you know, this is, uh, we're in this together. We're better together. I love, I love that uh, we can do this show for so long and ha- encounter so many awesome people. Uh, speaking of awesome people, next week's show, uh, Sari Azut from Level VC and Rocker Ooh. and uh, the author of an incredible newsletter, which uh, I am... Uh, which I am a huge of which I'm a huge fan called Check Your Pulse. Uh, Sorry, Azut is going to be on the show, uh, and uh, she'll be chatting a little bit about what the world looks like right now, and we'll be discussing what the world looked like back in February when we first sat down with her to uh, to talk uh, about uh, yeah about the work that she does, the newsletter that she writes, and uh, how she sees the world of startup and tech, and uh, in you know as a VC. Um, so you'll find that at futurecommerce.fm next Friday. Uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>